All right, folks. This is Keith, and you're watching Less Magic, More Gathering. This is Random Card Deck Tech Volume 9. We're working with Harvest Season. Search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of tapped creatures you control. So if you watched our brainstorming video, you know that we want to take advantage of the ramp that this card provides. And uh, we also need to be able to do that by having tapped creatures on the battlefield when we cast this spell. So, uh, what we ended up doing was quite simply going with a slew of mana dorks that we can tap and use that mana to cast this spell. That's the idea behind the deck. So, let's get started here, obviously. We've got four copies of Harvest Season that because that's how we do our random card deck tech. Whatever the random card is, we automatically put a four of. So we'll go into our creatures here. Uh, start out, let's look at these two first. Channeler Initiate, we got four copies of Channel Channeler Initiate. Uh, that will come in with three minus one counters on it. And you remove one of those and tap it to add one mana of any color. Uh, that, that'll be important here in a minute. Uh, Druid of the Cow is another two drop mana dork. Tap it and add a green. It's a 1 3. Pretty simple. If you've played Magic for a little while, you've probably seen that one. Uh, so, with those two, then we move into uh, Atsakan Seer. That is a green, a white, and one other. And then you can tap it for any color. And you can also sack it to return a dinosaur card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, that was what I was talking about when I said that the tapping the channeler initiate for a mana of any color would be important because we're running very few planes in here. So to get that white mana channeler initiate sometimes comes into play. There's a good chance that you're going to uh, run into either a channeler initiate or one of the uh, planes that we've got in the deck. So that's our first three. The last one is the Oasis Ritualist. Uh, it's a four drop, so I don't know if you call that one a mana dork or a mana dude, uh, whatever. Uh, four drop, you can tap him to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or you can tap an exert, which means he won't one one tap on your next turn to get two mana of any one color. Uh, so, sometimes some of the bigger spells we've got in here, uh, you might need that one extra mana if you want to get it out of turn early. So, being able to exert the Oasis Ritualist to get that one extra uh, is kind of handy sometimes. So, that's our four mana creating creatures. Three copies of Atsukan Seer, four each of Channeler Initiate and Druid of the Cow and two of the Oasis Ritualist. So what are we gonna do with all this mana? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Well, like I said, you're gonna tap these, hopefully at least two, um, sometimes three. I've tapped four of them before, just to cast Harvest Season, so you can get four lands then. Uh, if you get one land, you're not getting very good value out of Harvest Season. If you get two land, that's probably the minimum that you wanna get. Uh, if you get three or more, you're getting really good return from your mana that you're spending to uh, cast Harvest Season. So the goal is to always get at minimum two. And it's really not hard having that many mana producing creatures in the deck. You can usually always tap those to cast Harvest Season. And you can tap them for no reason, you know, it, just because they've gotten rid of the whole mana burn uh, thing that they used to do. So. Uh, you can tap five creatures if you want for mana and cast Harvest Season for using only three of them. Then you've got a couple left over uh, and you get the extra benefit of having those tapped creatures. So what are we going to do with all those, uh, with all the mana we're building up here? Uh, well, first off, we've got uh, three copies of Nissa Vital Force. But why? Well, you can get Nissa out pretty early usually, turn three. Uh, sometimes turn four if it's in your hand, definitely. Uh, so the the goal is, 
if you've got Anissa, try and get her out before you cast Harvest Season. Uh, because the turn she comes out, you can do the plus one ability and untap one of your lands. It becomes a 5-5 five five that can then protect her until the next turn. Uh, and then on the next turn, you usually will have no problem just sacrificing her essentially, using all six of her loyalty counters to activate that ultimate ability. You get an emblem so that whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card, and then you cast Harvest Season. By four, three mana, three lands, you go search for three lands, they come into play, you draw three cards, it's really handy dandy, it's nice to have, get you some extra card draw and it'll help you uh, get through the deck a little bit. And like I said, you can do that on turn three or four, you may still have other lands in your hand that you can put into play. So all that leads to a few things happening. Obviously you're thinning out your deck, you're getting the lands out of the deck and into your into play so that you can use them. Uh, it makes it so that you can draw extra cards if you've got that emblem and you've got a ton of mana out. So we're going to use some of that mana. The first other creature we've got is the Verdant Sun's Avatar. Whenever it or any other creature enters the battlefield you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So one thing you're going to run into sometimes is that while you're playing mana dorks and using them for mana, you might take some hits. You know, you might get hit by your opponent because you don't have blockers up, that kind of thing. So you take a little bit of damage there, but once you get the Verdant Sun's avatar out, then uh, you start gaining a lot of that back. And then uh, you cast out a Galta, maybe. Uh, if you've got all these mana dorks and your Verdant Sun's avatar, then... Galt is probably going to cast for two uh, more times than not. So you get a Galt out there and you get 12 life for it if you've got the Avatar out there. Handy dandy. we got two copies of Galta, three copies of Verdant Sun's Avatar, and three copies also of Zatalpa. Zatalpa is expensive. It's an 8 drop, but I've easily been able to cast that turn 5, uh, turn 6 at the latest in, in most cases. So, uh, you know, if you've got your avatar out there already, you're going to gain 8 life. If you don't, then that's just... Uh, Zatulpa is a really good creature. The, it has to be exiled because it's indestructible. And then it's got the flying double strike vigilance and trample also. So, it's a good creature. I think the reason it sees less play than it does is because of the cost of it. But in this deck, like I said, you can cast that a lot earlier than most decks can. Uh, we've also got... Blossoming Defense and Sheltering Light, a couple one drops in here just to, uh, you know, protect our mana dorks if that's the game we're playing. You know, you've just got to see what the situation is and how your opponent's playing. You may need to protect those mana dorks so that you can then cast your Harvest Season later and get good value out of it. Uh, or you may need to use uh, the Blossoming Defense to keep your Zatalpa from getting exiled or your, uh, you know, your. Uh, Sheltering Light can keep uh, Galta or your Avatar or whatever the case may be from getting destroyed. Uh, that's the difference between the two of them. Blossoming Defense makes your creature hexproof. Sheltering Light makes it indestructible. So you got to be aware of what your opponent's playing and use the proper spell. Um, last spell we've got in this deck is kind of a pain in the butt. It's uh, Overwhelming Splendor. There is not a ton of enchantment removal in main decks, and there's not a lot in sideboards either. So there's some counter spells in some main decks and definitely in some sideboards if you're playing against a black-blue. I know that's the big thing right now. Black-blue mid-range deck uh, has some negates in the main board and the sideboard, so I would expect that you can look forward to dealing with that. But anyway, Overwhelming Splendor comes into play. It enchants a player probably your opponent. The creatures enchanted player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Talk about dealing with a stupid scarab god or a uh, hazaret or a glory bringer or whatever the heck else you're dealing with. All your opponent's creatures lose their abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Holy crap. Uh, so that's good, obviously. And also the enchanted player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. So they can't, they can use their planeswalkers, but any other abilities on creatures or 
uh, artifacts, enchantments that are activated abilities, they can't use those anymore. So your uh, all of your flip lands that you've got out of the last couple sets are going to lose those abilities, um, things like that. The only abilities, when it says mana abilities, that is a mana producing ability. So if you've got an artifact that taps for mana, you can still tap that artifact for mana. Uh, but if you've got an artifact that requires you to pay a cost and get a benefit from it, you can't do that anymore. Your opponents can't do that. The person that is enchanted can no longer activate any abilities. Um, so, that's the deck. Uh, land base is pretty simple. 14 forest, uh, 4 Heshep Oasis, and 4 planes. Heshep Oasis is a pretty handy card, uh, especially if you get a Zatalpa out there, you put a Heshep Oasis on it, then you've got a 7-7 seven, seven double striker with Vigilance. Um, and if you've got the Overwhelming Splendor out there, then you're flying over everything that your opponent's got, <clears throat> and hitting them in the face for 14 whatever turn there turn you're on that's good good result um, you could run this up to five six planes just take out some forests not gonna hurt the deck any I mean sometimes you if you want to increase your chance of getting a planes so that you can cast an at at that's a can seer uh, it's no big deal so however you want to adjust the land base is fine and then your uh, Sideboard, I don't have it on here, but your sideboard's going to want to include things like Heroic Intervention, um, maybe the the Bronodon that you pay one tap and destroy an artifact or enchantment. That might be handy so that if somebody plays an Overwhelming Splendor on you, oh no, that wouldn't work, would it? Ah! Anyway, you may want to, you know, uh, run some artifact and enchantment removal. Uh, maybe some more life gain if you get up against a burn deck that's killing you before you can get your avatar out or uh, you know some of your bigger better creatures you might want to put some more life gain in there I know there's good wh white life gain uh, instants and sorceries um, and then for things like your scarab god and uh, other cards that are going to interact with your graveyard you know you can put in some protection there too so you guys know what you're playing against and know what to expect, uh, so I would just build your sideboard accordingly. Um, if we run down here a little bit on tapped out, you can see over here, TG, T, TCG player has this at $41.06 for the whole deck, so that's definitely budget. Uh, I've had a lot of fun playing this deck. I don't know how well it'll do competitively. I'm going to take it to our local game store store championship this weekend so I guess we'll find out a little bit uh, it is standard legal and let's go back up here and I'm gonna run through a play test just so I can kinda give you an idea what kinda hand you might draw and how you might do some things uh, so this hand I'm probably not gonna keep I want to because it's got a couple of the mana dorks, it's got a harvest season in there, but I can't cast either of those, and I may not be able to anytime soon. So let's go up here and do a mulligan, see what happens. This is a bad example, huh? Um, still, even with four lands, um, you're not going to keep that, because you can't do anything with it. So let's just go back and restart. Try this again. This is a much better start. I would probably, against my better judgment, go ahead and keep this. Then we got... Alright, so we got to pay one life, but we can cast out a Druid of the Cow. Next turn, we can cast another one. Turn after that. Look at that. We drew into a harvest season. I got kind of lucky. Uh, but you can cast uh, either another Channel or Initiate, or I'm going to cast the Oasis Ritualist. And you're doing all this still with just two mana, right? So next turn, we're going to tap these three for one mana each and cast our Harvest Season. So then we can go over here. We can tutor or not a sheltering light. We're going to tutor a Plains and another Plains. Put those onto the battlefield. They come in tapped. And then we've got to shuffle our library. Boom. So now 
you can see how that has all played into this deck. You know, you used those. Oh, I missed a land too, didn't I? Let's just do this. So it came in tapped, whatever. So get your Verdant Sun's avatar out there for seven. You've got one mana left over. Let's say you exert this guy just to uh, get another initiate, another mana guy out there. So that maximizes your mana usage. Next turn, uh, you, you know, you've got no problem casting a Galta and you gain 12 life because of the Verdant Sun's avatar being out there. So that's turn seven. You've got the Verdant Sun's avatar and you've got a handful of protection spells to, uh, you know, obviously I'm not playing an opponent. I was just running through how a hand might look. Uh, but you got a handful of protection spells and another mana dork out there if you need them later. There's a Nissa that'll help you when you start drawing these lands and things. So that's kind of how the deck's supposed to play. That was a good example there on the second go round. The first one with the mulligans didn't work out very well, but that's how the deck's supposed to look. That's how it's supposed to play. It's a budget deck as we saw, and like I said, it's a ton of fun. You get that overwhelming splendor out there, and it is hard to deal with, uh, you know, a Galta or a Zatalpa. And most of your opponents are going to be running, uh, you know, some kind of creature, ability, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. They get a lot of benefit from the creature ability, so taking those away uh, can really hurt them. So that's the deck. Uh, you can feel free to leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought of it. Uh... Let me know what you might change, what you might do differently. You can go to Tapped Out and check it out on there. Copy it, edit it, do whatever you want. And uh, definitely either here or there, let me know what you thought of it and what you might have done differently. So, that's this week's decks. deck. Now we're going to move on to Volume 10 for next week. That's going to be for Edwards. He's going to be working that. And just like last week... You're going to have to trust me. So, our random card is from... What set is that? I know what set that is. Ether Revolt. Um, Secret Salvage. I've never heard of this card. So I don't know what it does. Let it load up here. Exile target non-land card from your graveyard. Search your library for any number of cards with the same name as that card. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Well, I'm glad this is his deck, because while that sounds like it could be fun, it's going to take some thinking. Uh, Secret Salvage. So that'll be next week. This weekend, I'll try and get a video loaded up um, after the store championship and let you know how the Harvest Season deck did. And hopefully we'll have good results and I can get some kind of prize from that event. Uh, so next week, looking forward to Secret Salvage, and then also next week when we do our brainstorming, I'm going to open up some packs, and we'll be adding those to the giveaway for our 125 subscriber giveaway. That one's not going to be as big, and it's not your choice of cards out of a box or anything, but it's, uh, you know, we're happy we're growing, we're happy you guys are helping us out, so we appreciate that, and we want to return to you. Uh, every chance we get so we're gonna we've got at least two packs of hour of devastation and probably gonna throw in a couple more packs be looking for that on our brainstorming video next week and uh, I think that's it doses